So here we are in Power BI now and we will build this together today. In this chart you can see that there are different regions and different product groups and the user can choose between profits and sales. And the pretty cool thing is that this is done with a card visual and um, a bar chart. Today I want to show you how to build these KPI cards. The great thing of these KPI cards is that we will use small multiples and field parameters, which will be built out with the list slicer to enable the user to choose if he wants to see the profit or the sales and to adapt one KPI layout immediately to different other returns. So stay tuned, jump into Power BI and I will show you how it works. So here we are in Power BI now and we will build this together today. In this chart you can see that there are different regions and different product groups and the user can choose between profits and sales. And the pretty cool thing is that this is done with a card visual and um, a bar chart by using small multiples. That means that you do not have to do much because all the settings you apply for one chart will be applied automatically to the other returns. And so this is a super cool feature to get pretty fast an overview about different returns. And in the small multiples, you can use all the columns that you can use in Legends 2. And what you can also see here, you have here board charts showing the actual years, sales or profit. And we will use error bars to show the deviation to the past year. And the error bars will be able to change the color so they will be green or orange. So let's go to the starter board chart and let's start. So we will choose the card new, put in the selected measure, the selected measure is checking if the list slicer is profit or sales and returning either the profit or the sales. Then you go to the settings, to the callout values, change this to the go UI, change it to 20. Display units will be none. The decimals will be zero. The label will be total sales. It will be below the value and we will go with 12. The value units will be thousands and it will be semi bold. Then you go to the reference label, choose the selected measure, put in past year and the year over year change. Then you go to all go to the layout, change this to columns, go to the spacing, set this to zero, go to the divider, set this to 100%, go to the background, turn it off. Then you go to the reference labels, choose the sum selected measure, go to the selected measure past year, turn off the title, go to the value, choose it as thousands with no decimals, Turn on the details and choose the reference label title. So here you can say it's just saying past year. Go back to the value, choose the semi bold, put it to 18. And here we go. Then you go to the year over year change. Turn off the title. Set this to 16, to italic and also to semi bold. Here we will add a conditional formatting for the color. So the field value and the conditional formatting selected measure value. This will just change the color. So I will show you. So if the sum of the profit this year is smaller than the sum of the profit past year, it will choose the color bad or the color good. And in the color good or bad, there is just a hex code given for the color. So we will go back here. Then we will turn on the detail and add the detail title. This is saying 2024 versus 2023, so versus past year. Then you go back to the series, set to all, go to the layout, put it up. So 
Then we go back to the callout value, go to all, and we make the this space smaller. So now it is much better. Then you go to the card settings and turn off the background and the border. And then you can see it already looks like the version we want to build. So the next thing we will do is we will drag in the small multiples. And as the small multiples, we want to have the returns. So you pull it in here. And now you can immediately see that there are several rows with the returns. So, so you go to the settings, go to the small multiples layout, change it to row. Then it immediately looks like that. And we want to show four. So you can drag this over already. Then we will turn off the border. Go to the grid lines, put the color to white, and put the width to 12. So you can see there is space added. Then you go to the headers. The horizontal is okay. You go to the title, set the title to 16. The color we can keep. Then you go to the background and choose gray as a background color. So here you can see already all the headers for the cards generated. For the lower part, we go for a clustered column chart. And we have two series now. We drag in the selected measure and we drag in the months with the one character, so the short ones. And we drag in the returns for the small multiples. Go to the settings, turn off the title of the x-axis, set this to 8. Do the same with the y-axis. Turn off the title. Go to the small multiples. We want to have one row and four columns. And the padding should be 12. The border will be turned off. The title will also be turned off. We go back to the y-axis. We do not want to have a shared one. So each chart will get its own axis. Then we go to the grid lines, turn them off. Go to the column and set the color to gray. Last, we go to general and turn the title off. So now it looks pretty much like the chart I showed you in the beginning. So now you click on the visual, go to the analytics tab and go to the arrow bars, turn them on. And here you can see in the bars that you can only choose one color. So we have to put in here two series to be able to have green and an orange deviation. So we go back here. And I have written two measures, so the sum selected measure negative. This measure is checking if the profit this year is smaller than the profit past year. If it is like that, it is giving back the sum of the profit. If not, it's blank. So in this measure is the series with the negative deviation. And I have written a second one with the positive deviation. And these are the two series we have to drag in. So we drag them here the positive and the negative. And then you can see here the columns. We go to the setting, turn off the legend, go to the columns, go to the layout, turn on the overlap, put it to 100, put the space to 25, go to the sum of the selected negative, change gray as a color, do the same for the positive. And so we are back with our gray columns. So now we will add the arrow bars. And for the arrow bars, if you have the series negative and turn them on, you will need an upper and a lower bound now. And I have already written these measures. So the upper bound for the bars that have a negative deviation is the sum of the profit first year or the sales past year. So this measure will check if the profit is smaller than first year, then it will give back as an upper bound for the arrow bars the sum of the profit first year. And the same I have done for the lower bound. But in the lower bound, it will be the sum of the profit or the sum of the sales. 
So we will drag them in here now. And you can already see the sparse coming up. You will go to the bars, set the color to orange, as it is a negative deviation, set the width to 10, and the border size to zero, and turn off the markers. Then we will do the same for the positive ones. Here you need the upper bound positive, and the lower bound positive. Turn them on, go to the bar, choose green as the color, put the width to 10, the border size to zero and turn off the markers. So now you can see already the deviations and the bars. What we need now are the data labels. So we go back to our visual settings. So in the line field, we will drag in the upper bounds these points from the arrow bars. So you go to the upper bounds negative and the upper bounds positive. Then we will go to the settings for the lines. Turn this off. Then you go to the data labels, go to the upper bound negative, go to the value. And as a value, we will choose the year over year change. Put it to 8, put the font to Calibri, and you can see already here that there is a percentage. Then we will do the same for the positive. Go to the value, choose the year over year change. Go to 8, select here Calibri, and turn off for both the background. And we also put both values um, above the line. So you can see it's much better now. We will take this and adjust it a little bit. And now you can see that we have built out this chart for all the regions without having to build single charts. And I can show you the next great thing now. So you will copy this. Ctrl C, Ctrl V, and also this. And what we will do now, we will go back here, go to the small multiples and change the field. So we go to the product category. If you drag this in, you will see this has changed immediately. We will do the same here. And now you can see the product categories, which is pretty awesome. We will put this down a little bit put in a slicer here as we want to be able to slice. Drag in the return here. Change the settings to a uh, drop down. Go to the interactions. Turn this off and also turn this off. So now you can see that you can filter the product category by the region without doing much. And what is really awesome, and this is what I want to show you now also, you can change all these charts with a few clicks. So let's say you want to put out um, the arrow bars. So you go back to the arrow bars, turn them off. And then you only have the bars left. You can also delete the lines. And now we want to have a color change for all this. So we drag in here the selected measure for all months. Go to the data labels, turn them off and go to the columns, go to conditional formatting, and let's say format the columns. The conditional formatting for the columns is something I have also written before. And this is a measure that is searching for the maximum values in Asia, Europe, South America, and North America. Also as for the minimum values, 
and if these max or min values match the sum of the selected measures, so the sales or the profit, they will change the color, which you can already see here. You have to write the measure like this because if you only search for the max and the minimum value, you will only see the maximum or the minimum value across all the regions. And if you do not like this bar chart, you can also say take a line chart. Show me the selected measure, drag the reasons to the small multiples, go to the settings, go to the line, go to all, choose the color, and turn this on. The width will be 2. The color will be, let's say, green. Go to the markers, turn them off so they are also gone. So here you can see the sales or the profit of this year. The only annoying thing is that sometimes this first axis disappears. And now you can also drag in the past year if you want. And you will also see the past year. You can go back to the lines, go to the past year, change the color to a gray. And also the line types can be changed to smooth so this looks much better now and also here again if you want to have the maximum values we can drag them in again so i think this were these ones we have to check yes this were these so we go back to the lines Go to the max, turn them off. Go to the markers, turn them on, off, off. And for the max point, we will keep them. We will we'll keep the size of 5 and we will keep the color black. And now they are not showing. Interesting. So we go back to the lions. Go to the color, 100%, transparency. Go to the markers, the color. Ah, we have to put this down. And now the colors are also showing. So I hope I were able to show you how you can use small multiples together with KPI cards to produce a quick overview across returns or different product categories. As you can see, it is also very easy to change the look and feel of these KPIs. And altogether, I think it is really a great solution. And I hope you will be able to apply it to your own projects. So if you liked the video, don't forget to leave a like. I hope to see you on my channel soon. And wish you a great day now. Bye bye.